I've spoken about the different areas of specialization for MBA grads here in Canada. But in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the entire journey through the process. Let's get started. So in my previous video, I went through the different areas of specialization for MBA grads here in Canada. I talked about consulting, finance, marketing, operations, and sustainability. These core five areas of specialization. If you have not seen that video, please click on this link to go through the video so you can have an idea of what these areas are, how much these areas pay, and what the roles and expectations are like. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the job hunting journey. Yes, we're going to discuss where to start, how to start, you know, prepare your mind towards the whole journey. So it's going to be a calm and interesting video and I want you to watch to the end because there are a number of good things that we're going to add in today's video. So first, let's talk about your MBA journey. So the first thing is identifying your pay goals. So as a new MBA candidate, either as an international student or, you know, a citizen or even a permanent resident here in Canada, one thing that for sure would always cross your mind is, I need to get a job that would pay me way more than this money I'm investing in my MBA program. I need to get a job that would pay off, you know, my student loans, that would pay off, you know, the money you've spent trying to apply, GRE, if you need to do English tests, all those amounts here and there that you spent to even bring yourself to this spot. One thing you're going to be thinking about is that job that I'm going to do at the end of the day, it has to pay me. If it does not pay me, then what's the point? I could as well just do something else. So this is what you're going to be thinking about throughout that process. I'm saying this because that's what I was also thinking about during my own journey. Now with this in mind, we already have our goal. Even if we don't have a range that we're thinking about yet, but we already see that whatever we're going to be getting, at least it should pay off your student loans as quick as possible. It should pay off all the expenses you've made. And so now we have that problem statement on one end. We're now going to be thinking about what is going to be the walkthrough throughout the journey. The second thing is knowing yourself. Now, the next thing that should come into play is understanding yourself, knowing who you are. This is very important because <laughs> ha, if you don't know where you're coming from or who you are and where you're going to, you'll be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You'll be carried away. Now, when I say understanding yourself, I mean, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your expectations? What are the things that you're like, ah, no, this is my ceiling or this is my floor. Or, oh, if I see this thing in the application, I'm not going to do it. Or if I see these long work hours, I'm not going to apply. Or if I see these, you know, travel opportunities, I'm not going to do them. You have to understand who you are. Now, the reason why I say you have to understand who you are is because this decision would actually direct you to the specialization that you would do. Yes. So, for instance, if you're someone that is open to traveling up and down and you don't mind, like, working in consulting, then you should know that focus all your energy, your application, your time on consulting opportunities. Now, when you're focused in consulting, you're not just going to be streamlining yourself to operations consulting or strategy consulting or even management consulting. You're probably going to be applying to the big four, the big three, boutique consulting, different kinds of you know, consulting. So if you're that kind of person, just know that this is who you are and you're open to this kind of opportunities. And then if you're on the other spectrum where you're like, I can't come and kill myself. I can't come and be working 11, 12 hours a day. I can't come and be working overnight. I can't come and be traveling from one place to the other. I can't leave my family. I can't do this. I can't do that. Just start knowing now that there are some jobs that will require you to do that. So don't stress yourself applying for those jobs if this is who you are. So understanding who you are would actually play a very, very important role in the specialization or the area of specialization that you're going to, you know, focus your energy on. I'm saying this because it even happened to me. At a point, I was like, okay, am I here? I'm good here. Oh, no, I'm good here. Oh, I'm good here. But understanding who you are, you don't have to start making those decisions now that you're at home, like before your admissions or anything. But now you've seen this video, start thinking about it. <laughs> start thinking about who am I? What am I good at? 
what would I see as my ceiling? What will I tolerate as my ceiling? What will I tolerate as my floor? What are my acceptable flaws? You know, having this idea would help you, you know, nudge you in the right direction. Now, when you start the MBA program, for some schools it's one year, some schools it's two years. Just know that time flies. Like, you would think you have all the time in the world. You don't. You don't, my sister, my brother, you don't. So it would be very, very helpful for you to discover who you are just before you start your MBA program, or at least the first few weeks when you start the program. So now we've done the psychological part of the journey. All that thinking, discovering, understanding. Let's now start with the action. Yes, the physical part of the journey. Now the third thing is aligning yourself with the right clubs and communities right for you. Now, for most MBA programs, you're going to start seeing specialization groups or committees or, you know, teams where people that want to go into consulting are in one club, people looking to go into finance are in another club, people going to marketing are in a different club. So having done that, understanding yourself, um, understanding how much you need to make, you already know the kind of area you want to go to. So for instance, if you're like, I want to go into investment banking and probably you have like some investment banking experience before the MBA, you'll most likely join finance committee or finance club. If you're thinking of, okay, I've probably done investment banking before, but I want to go into consulting. At that beginning, when the club start forming and everything, indicate interest in going into consulting. Now, you may not have consulting experience like many other people in the club, but you most likely learn one or two things from like the people that have this experience in that club. So when you align yourself with the right clubs, the right community, you'll be able to brush up yourself. For consulting, I remember that, you know, you can pick a consulting partner, like somebody from the same consulting club, and be the person's, you know, interviewer, while the person is the interviewee, and, and then you switch places. So you can do this with numerous club partners and try to brush up yourself. And then some clubs still have, you know, very good relationship with their predecessors, the predecessors who have gotten these roles, and have gotten this first-hand experience can come and also brush you up teach you show you how to do things show you how to present yourself show you how to do a number of things that can help you get the job so yes the third point is finding clubs and associations that you can join that would help you enhance your experience help you enhance your exposure help brush you up and show you things you need to be aware of during the application journey now, these clubs will have different resources that will facilitate your, you know, your entire journey. If you're in consulting, you get some case studies. If you're in finance, you probably get some finance case studies or even like application processes. Then if you're in marketing, you get some surveys, some case studies, different resources that these different clubs will have will help bring you up to speed. So most of these resources have been used by your predecessors or even professors that are like sponsoring or like that are mentors for these clubs. So be sure to check in with your clubs, get those resources and start planning. Now, speaking of planning, which is my fourth point, one good thing that would help you in your application journey is planning. So yes, we cannot overemphasize the power and the grace of planning. Planning is so important. Now, for planning, you have to be strategic. Yes, there are jobs and roles open for MBA grads, but these jobs and roles will require you to send in your application. It will require you to, you know, go head to head. It will require you to put your best foot forward. It will require your cover letter, your resume, you know, the interviews itself. It will require a lot of things. So it's not going to be a walk in the park at all. It's going to be as every other, you know, job opportunity is out there for everybody. But the good thing is that the MBA program gives you an opportunity to meet people that have gone further in their careers, people that are just starting. It even gives you an opportunity for you to work with CEOs, COOs, CFOs, different big people in your classroom. So you're going to be having those kind of very close relationship with those people. So use it wisely. Now, speaking of planning, I know down down in my previous video where I shared my MBA journey, I'd mentioned that I didn't start my student job until until way later, like eight months down the line, like eight months after I'd resumed. I'm going to add a layer to that story. I didn't start my student job until I had gotten my permanent job offer. 
yes that's how serious planning is so now this is subjective depending on what you planned before coming for your MBA program depending on even how much money you have to sustain yourself before you start working very very subjective another good thing is I already got my permanent residency so I could afford to do a full-time job while I was studying now there were a number of factors that enabled me to do that first off I opted for installment payments for school fee so the burden of paying my school fee at the beginning was not so much I divided my school fee into four tranches so I had to pay the first and second one before you know that job offer that's one the second thing is I got some scholarships. So I used my scholarship to pay like the first tranche and some part of my second tranche as well. My own goal was the MBA, the grad job before anything else. So I knew I needed to get my grad job. Another reason why I decided to do that was the recruitment cycle starts like the fifth month after resumption. So I didn't want to graduate before applying for jobs. So I started as early as possible. So with this, I was able to get my grad job offer before starting my student job. So depending on how, you know, the planning goes for you, depending on what you think is your priority, just plan and make sure that you follow through with your plan. Now, the fifth thing is the application journey itself. This is a very critical period because everything you've done from the first, second, third and fourth step comes to play here in the fifth step. So... You've discovered your pay goals, your ceilings, your flaws, how much you want to earn, how much lower are you willing to go, how much higher are you willing to accept. You've also discovered yourself, are you the kind of person that's open to traveling to different places, do you mind consulting, is your strength in finance, are you better in sustainability or marketing, or are you an operations person, you've discovered who you are. Now with these two things, you've started working on your plans to know if you want to get your grad job first before your student job, or if you think you can actually pull two of them together at the same time, you've discovered that, but you've joined the right association and the clubs that would help you brush you up and you know take you through this journey. The fifth step now is to start your application journey. Now in this phase, you're going to be training your applications here and there, sending your applications as much as possible. During this period, you are also going to be using skills like networking, negotiations, different kinds of things that you'll be using and we'll be discussing it in subsequent videos. Now we've come to the end of this video. I hope you had a great time. I hope you've picked one or two things that you can add to what you're currently doing to help you in your own journey. If you're seeing my face for the first time, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Click on the bell notification so that each time I bring a new video, you'll be sure to see it. Please do not forget to like this video, share this video to your friends and loved ones, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!